In this video, we're going to talk about how to judge the relative importance of contributing structures to a resonance hybrid. In some resonance hybrids, all of the contributing structures contribute equally. These are called equivalent contributing structures. An example of this is the resonance hybrid of the carbonate ion. If you remember, the carbonate ion has a central carbon atom with three oxygens around it. And there are three contributing structures to this resonance hybrid that look like this. All of these structures are at the same energy. All of them have the same energy. And so they all contribute equally to the overall resonance hybrid. But that's not always the case. And sometimes there are major and minor contributing structures to a resonance hybrid because the different structures are of different energies. Basically, the lower energy of a contributing structure, the more stable it is, and the larger a contribution it makes to the overall resonance hybrid. So how do we judge the relative importance of contributing structures? There are some rules. First, contributing structures in which all atoms have filled valence shells are more stable and therefore contribute more. For example, let's look at this cation. We can draw a contributing structure an additional contributing structure to describe this cation that looks like this. But in the second contributing structure, one of the atoms, this carbon atom here, has an incomplete octet. Therefore, it is higher in energy and contributes less to the resonance hybrid, meaning that this structure is the major contributor to this resonance hybrid. The second rule for Judd Borton's of contributing structures is that contributing structures with a greater number of covalent bonds are lower in energy and therefore contribute more to the overall resonance hybrid. For example, let's look at the same ion that we were just looking at, and if we compare these two contributing structures and count up their covalent bonds, we see that the structure on the left has five bonds and the structure on the right has four covalent bonds, again indicating that the structure on the left will be the major contributor to this resonance hybrid. The third rule for judging the relative importance of contributing structures is that contributing structures with less separation of charge are lower in energy and contribute more. For example, let's look at the structure of acetone. Acetone has uh, two contributing structures to its overall resonance hybrid. The second one looks like this. Now what we mean by charge separation is a separation of a negative and a positive charge. So the structure on the left shows no separation of charge. All of its atoms are neutrally formally charged. On the right, we have separation of charge in that now we have a negative charge and a positive charge. The overall molecule is still neutral, but we do have those separate charges within that same molecule, making that more unstable, making it higher in energy, and making the structure on the left the major contributing structure. You'll notice that the structure on the right also breaks the previous two rules in that it has less covalent bonds and it also has an unfilled valence shell. The fourth rule uh, to determine major and minor contributing structures has to do with matching uh, negative charges with more electronegative atoms and matching positive charges with less electronegative atoms. So contributing structures with a negative charge on a more electronegative atom or with a positive charge on a less electronegative atom are going to be more stable and therefore contribute more. If we do the reverse, if we put a positive on an electronegative atom or a negative on a less electronegative atom, those are going to destabilize the contributing structure and make them higher in energy and make them contribute less to the overall resonance hybrid. For example, let's look at this negatively charged ion. In this contributing structure, we put the negative charge and the extra pair of electrons on the carbon atom but we can draw a second contributing structure that puts that negative charge and the extra electrons on the oxygen. In comparing these two structures, the structure on the left puts the negative charge on a less electronegative atom, the structure on the right puts the charge on a more electronegative atom, making the structure on the right lower in energy, making it the major contributor to the overall resonance hybrid because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so it can handle that negative charge better. The final rule is that contributing structures that violate all four of the previous rules can be ignored. In other words, they don't need to be written. Basically, if they violate all four previous rules, they're so unstable that they're such a minor contributor 
to the overall resonance hybrid that it's not worth even showing. Let's look at an example. This is the structure of acetone. This is a major contributing structure. We can draw a minor contributing structure. This is a minor contributing structure because uh, it does not have complete valence shells, at least in the case of carbon. It has less covalent bonds than the major structure, and it has separation of charge that the major structure does not have. However, it does have the negative charge on the more electronegative atom and the positive charge on the less electronegative atom, so it hasn't broken all the rules. We do draw this particular contributing structure. However, the next structure breaks all four of the previous rules. It has an incomplete octet. It has less covalent bonds than the major contributing structure. It has separation of charge, again, that the major contributing structure does not have. And it separates that charge in such a way that the positive charge is on the more electronegative atom, and the negative charge is on the less electronegative atom. And since it breaks all four rules, we can therefore ignore it. We don't even need to draw it. And so our contributing structures for this resonance hybrid would be complete just by including these two contributing structures here. Now let's look at a problem that you might be asked to do in judging major and minor contributors to a resonance hybrid. Considering the f consider the following contributing structures to an overall resonance hybrid. Which of these contributing structures are most likely to be the major contributing structure and which would be the minor contributing structures? So let's go through our list. First thing we're looking for is um, are any of these contributing structures, do any of these contributing structures contain unfilled valence shells? And the answer is yes. The rightmost structure has an unfilled valence shell in its nitrogen. The second thing we're looking for are uh, is which of these contributing structures have the greatest number of covalent bonds, because covalent bonds are stabilizing, having more covalent bonds will make uh, these structures lower in energy and allow them to contribute more to the overall resonance hybrid. The first two contributing structures each have four covalent bonds. We're not going to pay attention to the, the bonds on carbon because um, these bonds are the same in all cases, so we're just looking at the other bonds. And in that case, the first resonance contributor has four bonds, the second has four bonds, the third has three bonds, and so this one has less covalent bonds, making it less stable and making it uh, a minor contributor to the overall resonance hybrid. The next rule talks about separation of charge, and in all of these cases we have the same separation of charge. We have a negative and a positive charge, so there's no difference uh, with rule three between these different contributing structures. The fourth rule deals with uh, having the negative charge on the more electronegative atom and the positive charge on the less electronegative atom. Um, in the case of the first structure, we have a positive and a negative charge on the same atom. Uh, nitrogen is fairly electronegative, so that's somewhat unstable to have that positive charge on nitrogen in the first structure. However, in the second two structures, we have the negative charge on carbon, a positive charge on nitrogen. Carbon is uh, less electronegative than nitrogen, so both of these are destabilized relative to the first structure due to the fact that we have that negative on carbon and the positive on nitrogen. None of these structures breaks all four rules, so we do have to draw them all. However, the first structure is going to be the major structure, the second structure is going to be a minor contributor, and the third structure, because it breaks so many of the rules, is going to be a very minor contributor. It's okay if you just put minor and minor, um, but I want to be as specific as possible in my example. So the first structure, because it doesn't break any of the rules, uh, is going to be the, well, it does break, um, well, it does break rule three, however, all three of these structures do, so it is going to be the major structure. Uh, compared to the other contributing structures here.